This is my favorite field trip that we take at Science in the Summer Camp, and I'm so glad Mom has the time off to chaperone this year. I like it too. Aw, look! Tyson wants to come with us to the Natural History Museum. I bet he would really enjoy it there. Hi, I'm Alex. Welcome to the Museum of Natural History. Today we will be exploring the fourth floor, where we will learn about the history of the Earth and take a look at our fabulous fossils. After our lesson, you are free to explore on your own, as long as you remain with an adult. Wow! Look at that Triceratops! It's so amazing to think that all these dinosaurs walked the Earth millions and millions of years ago. Millions of years ago, Deshaun? Really? How do you know that? That's a great question. I'll tell you. Fossils are found inside a special type of rock, and scientists called paleontologists have learned how to date the different layers of rock. They have tools that can tell them the age of those rocks. That's how we know that the Earth is really old, and how we can see that it has changed over millions of years. Rocks? Really? Rocks are what tell us how old the Earth is? Why is it that fossils are found in rock? I can tell you the answer to that, Jasmine, but let's see if we can find an explanation here in the museum that will show us too. I think I found it. This shows a slice of the Earth's crust. I can see many different layers of rock. That's right, Jasmine. And each layer is like a page in a history book. The bottom layer is the oldest and tells about the past long, long ago. Millions and even billions of years ago. The top layer is the newest. Fossils are the remains of living things that existed a long time ago. Sometimes when an animal or plant died, it sunk into the mud and sediment. Later, over many, many years, the earth changed. And when that mud hardened into sedimentary rock, the bones, shells, and leaves were preserved. They leave an impression which we call a fossil. Scientists today have a good idea of where and how to look for fossils. Deshaun! Look over here. Look at this gigantic fern. Think mom would like that in her garden? <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is interesting. Look at this one. It says here that this was an ancient type of horse that lived 50, is that million? Years ago. It's so tiny, it's smaller than Tyson. Yes, another good point, Jazz. Fossils can tell a story. Scientists call this the fossil record. The fossil record? Yes. The fossil record gives us clues about the way living things used to be. 50 million years ago, ancestors of the horses we know today were much smaller than they are now. And, as you can see, some plants were much larger. In some places, not only have the animals and plants changed, but the climate and landscape has changed also. I get it. If the fossil record shows that sea creatures and shells are found at the top of a mountain or in a desert, then we know that long ago, this land was at the bottom of an ocean. Right. And that land got pushed up or moved over millions of years. A million-year-old bug that looks like the one I saw in the backyard yesterday. It says that it was trapped in tree sap that hardened into something called amber. And scientists study and compare these bugs to ones living today. I didn't know there were fossil insects. That's really cool. I thought it was just big creatures, like dinosaurs. There are so many types of fossils, big and small. Fish, reptiles, birds, plants, and insects have been found. Humans too. It says here on this sign that the fossil record does not tell the whole story. It's only the ones who happen to die near ground that's soft or muddy that we know about. The good news, though, is that scientists are making more and more fossil discoveries all the time. This is all pretty interesting and cool, but why do scientists care about all this old stuff so much anyway? Wouldn't they rather be studying living animals, like Tyson? Well, one thing scientists have learned from comparing ancient times to now is that humans, animals, and even the climate have changed over the years. Understanding the past can help us think about what's important for the future. For example, lots of our energy comes from coal, oil, and natural gas. Guess what? They all come from fossils. Scientists are using that information to help us make important changes in how we use fossil fuel. Exploring and discovering and helping sounds like a cool job. I think I just might want to be a scientist when I grow up. Great idea. Science is everywhere, so you'll never run out of things to study. 
Now let's grab mom from the giant fern over there and go eat. We can see more fossils after lunch. I'm so hungry, I could eat a T-Rex. Well, that's nothing new, big brother. <laughs> <laughs> Science. Stop and try to wonder why.